think that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past that could be shared with the present moment? So I thought to myself, why not speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world, and that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewer on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to the subject of channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Well, I, I did have one when I was three and a half, but there's uh, zero uh, quote unquote proof for it. I had to uncover it uh, with hypnosis and uh, long story, but in that uh, experience, uh, you know, I sort of rolled out of the top of my head, went straight home to mom, you know, uh, you know, not my mom, it's, she's everybody's mom, right? And then she said, I had to go back. And so I went back. <laughs> I was rather upset. But <laughs> on the way, I, I, I saw so, uh, several of the ETs. They, they tend to hang out on that level of near death a lot, which is very interesting. And then, uh, you know, the uh, psychologist I was working with said, let's, let's look into that. And so he, he uncovered a great many of my uh, early ET experiences. Interesting. Okay, so this whole near-death experience at three years old that you obviously wouldn't know about, but in a regression it came about. Uh, you, you had no inkling that that was even there, though. Well, I had inklings in the sense that I have two things. No fear of death. I mean, I, there are certain types of dying I would rather not like to experience, but that's different. But the other thing is I was totally convinced we would not blow ourselves up. I mean, utterly, totally convinced. Everybody was running around. We're not going to blow ourselves up. And that's what the ET showed me. They were watching how, you know, the energies of the world were shifting. And they said, yeah, it's going to whip. You're going to work. this. It's going to make it this time. We're going to make it this time. You're going to get through. Well, let's just go back to childhood again here. So, um, was there anything in the childhood that you could think back and think, you know what, I think I was uh, picking up on something there. Or I think I could see that, that gift I had, but I didn't know what it was and it wasn't expressed in my family at all. Hmm. 
there was no that never anything obvious um at least uh, interestingly enough uh i i was always considered weird by my family <laughs> but many people are <laughs> and uh yeah and i would i would be aware of things uh it's like my sister and i would go walking out in the woods up on the hill and i'd sort of sense you know the the elves the tree spirits and all of that i wouldn't talk to her about them but i sensed them yeah well do you think if you look back that there's quite an imaginative side of yourself that yes. was there as well that was maybe a bit more present than you sort of would have thought or what some children may have had you had a large imagination do you think yes do you think that's part of the gift that you've you know that you know, if you've got that open imagination, then, you know, more is allowed to flow through that obviously is not of you. But having that imagination side, um, imaginative side, sort of is a is a bonus with this work sometimes. Yes. Um, as I put it once, imagination is the master key to the inner worlds. Interesting. You truly feel that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So normal kind of childhood and um, pretty much Growing up, you know, sort of in the 20s, 30s, what was your sort of career back then? Uh, let's see. Well, um, my mother died quite suddenly when I was 16. Uh, cerebral hemorrhage, just, you know, she was gone in one morning. And I had been working with um, Betty Bethards, who's, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever uh, heard about her, but she was teaching people uh meditation this is way back in you know 68 right uh so uh you know she was uh training people how to meditate and i picked it up and my sister and i did that and so i had from that moment on you know i was 14 i i started to become even more aware of my guides of you know the presence of you know the intelligent is and then when she died, it was kind of a watershed for me because my sister, who wanted to be a scientist, uh, you know, sort of went on one side, which is, okay, when you die, you're dead. And I went on the other side, which means, that, okay, so much love, so much energy in that person. Energy cannot be destroyed. Therefore, that energy is somewhere. So, and I had dreams of my mom too. But, uh, and... Uh, around that time, I had a really, really incredible dream of, you know, going and, and uh, uh, flying around with the angels and so on and seeing my mother and seeing my father, seeing my mother and say, and say, I don't know if this is real, <laughs> but at any rate, it was a magnificent dream. But no, the, the imagination, the, the interesting thing about imagination is I know when I'm making things up. And so many people say, oh, well, you know, you're just making that up. Well, I know what I'm not when I'm making it up, when I'm not making it up. <laughs> so. Right. Absolutely. And what was the career then sort of getting into the 30s and 40s? What was that then? Well, I. Uh, let's see, believe it or not, uh, I did. I did. I was uh, living in a number of uh, shared rental houses. I was studying with the Sufis, which was uh, fascinating and wonderful. Uh, but uh, I didn't have any specific career goals as such, but I am an artist. So what I learned how to do was make rocking horses out of wooden paper mache. And, you know, I ended up selling about 80 of them eventually, uh, 80 or 90, I forget. But, um, you know, I would, work, I would work to clean houses in the morning and then work on the horses in the afternoon. And so I have, all things considered, I had a very good life. You know, my, my wants are not huge. No. And where do you think then the, the sort of tipping point was for uh, getting into, the, you know, this sort of metaphysical field? I mean, are we going towards the 90s then, in a sense? Was there a teacher that came towards you in the 90s? Or, or was there something before that that was, a, you know, a push? Right. Well, the metaphysical field, I mean, in a sense, I've been uh, hooked into it since 1968 with, with the meditation, because I did daily meditation. Uh, and then I worked with the Sufis until 1990. But then, as I said, I sort of outgrew them. 
partly because the, my teacher uh, at the time could not uh, uh, quite fathom that I could channel information because or the story is I was doing what they call uh, a walking in the manner of a teacher. You know, you, you walk beside your teacher and you, you, you know, you follow his or her rhythm and his or her breathing. And so you, you just sort of catch their state of being. Uh, so I was doing that with my teacher's teacher. And um, at the time I was living in this uh, not very well built apartment. And so uh, this particular teacher's teacher was a very fast person. And so I was doing a very fast walk and I was feeling very sorry for the people underneath me because of course, pound, 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 pound on, on, the, on their ceiling. So I sat down because, because they, had, they had shown a, a picture of him uh, you know, playing solitaire and dictating to his to his student. So I, I I know how to play solitaire. So I laid out the solitaire, and all of a sudden I heard him dictating. So I wrote it down and sent that to my to my uh, his his student, my teacher. Uh, but he the, the, he didn't really he, he he couldn't sit he couldn't sit with it. So I left. And that's how I found, uh, I'm, just by chance, I found the Spirit Speaks magazine. Right. And what did you find in the Spirit Speaks magazine then? Okay. Well, Spirit Speaks magazine, this was a ni- uh, early 1990s, of course, because this was in 1990 that the shift, uh, the shift away from the Sufis came. And uh, Spirit Speaks was a lovely magazine, which was, no advertising at the time. It was a beautiful thing. I actually have a copy, but I'd have to go up to the next room. I'd forgot to bring that. But, uh, uh, you know, she basically had a stable of, you know, 15 to 20 ch- channels. And every month she would ask the channels to, to talk up to a specific issue, like the earth changes or uh, UFOs or uh, what's the state of marriage or whatever. And because I knew I could channel, I said, this, this sounds like a great deal of fun. So I asked, uh, uh, you know, sort of put up the antenna and said, is there any being that I know who would like to have their name put on the end of the, uh, what's being said? And so an old friend from England, uh, from Bath, England, the to- a town witch, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Constance McDerwin, Connie McDerwin, and um, she came up and we used her coven name, Obahan. And so for a while I was channeling Obahan for Spirit Speaks. When you say you were channeling um, Obahan, um, how did that work for you? Did you, I mean, was there any sort of practicing? I mean, how, how did you learn how to channel? I guess is what I'm saying. It's kind of native to me. It's kind of natural to me. Uh, I sort of had to, you know, grow up to the point where I could do it. But um it is, it's like listening, um, listening kind of with your heart and the depth of your mind. And uh, I tested her, uh, you know, Betty Bethard's had a whole number of, you know, if, you, if you're communicating with her spirit, uh, this is the test. You know, so I would test her to make sure. But uh, she also had told me some stories about her life, which is, for instance, that her husband had been shot by mistake in her tavern brawl. And I said, wait a minute, this is the early 1500s. There were guns in the early 1500s? I didn't know, so I had to look that up and there were. So I was like, okay, I think I'm on the right track. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, um, okay, it's like, if you're reading a book, say for instance, uh, a Perry Mason book or, or something, you know, or, or and, and you know the voice of Raymond Burr, right? And if you're reading the book and you can imagine the, the voice of Raymond Burr, the speaking, you know, in his parts in the book, it's like that. It's almost like hearing your own thoughts, but it's just different enough that I can usually tell it's not me. But yeah, mostly it's opening, you know, just opening up the channels, opening opening up the antennae. Well, thank you for that. And I think from looking at your channeling, I would definitely say that you're more of a uh, conscious channeler rather than a full trance channeler. Much, yeah. Partly because I want to see when it's going through to make sure that it's still on the same uh, high wavelength. Uh, 
and that's you know that's all the work that I did with Nikola Tesla was that. Uh, but sometimes I would read it two months later and go, I channeled that. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> how has your um, husband taken the the work that you do with the channeling? Has he been quite open to it? Yeah, he's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. He's had some interesting experiences himself, although he's you know he's basically a computer engineer and uh, he's also a wonderful Mister Fix It. He can pick up anything made by human hands and say, oh, it's a this, it does that, and this is how you fix it. I mean, when he saved us in car repairs alone, staggers the mind, uh, I love him to bits. <laughs> Great that you've got that love and support there as well. And over time then, I guess you've, um, well, I guess you've, uh, you know, obviously developed your channeling uh, gift as well, but um, you also do... If uh, people wanted to have a, have a session with you, you mainly focus on the sort of a car ship reading session. So just tell us how that works and how that differs to the sort of channeling work that you do as well. Okay, well, this is this is my little uh, picture. Okay. Uh, all right. It, it differs mostly in the sense that I, I say it's very specific specific prayer to open up the records and ask the permission of the lords of the Akashic records. Because for a while, people could, could access records all over the place, and uh, but people were misusing it. So the lords of the Akashic records shut everything down for a while. And then in 1950, someone was given the gift of the prayer to open the records again. So I used that prayer. And so it's more like um, entering into the field where the records and the record keepers are. Uh, when you're channeling, it's a very one-to-one, -one, very, very pointed because uh, you're, you're focused on that person or being. Uh, and But the Akashic Records is you're in a field of, of knowledge. and But the, it's similar in the sense that uh, you're trained to just listen. You know, you, you, you say what you're being told. You, you know, my life is a telephone, you know. <laughs> it's like, hopefully I'm not in the way. You know? And what they say, I give out. And, and you know, it's, but it's the same thing with, with channeling in, to that degree. You know, I don't argue. You know, Nikola Tesla is a little disappointed that I'm not uh, a scientist, you know. But I would at least listen to him and I wouldn't argue with him. A lot of scientists would argue with him because he's presenting an entirely different kind of physics than most people are used to. But it is that kind of, you do step back out of the way and allow, allow it through. Yeah, so let me get this right then. I'm going to you for an Akashic reading. How does mm -hmm. that session work then? And what do I get from that session? Okay. Um, the method is that I, you know, send you a consent form and you write it out. We tr uh, find a time and, uh, I, you know, I look at my calendar, find the time, and we agree on time. And then I send you a dear client letter, which has my contact information. But the actual uh, work itself is I say the prayer, uh, uh, you know, aloud and then silently, and then I let people know when I'm in the records. And then it's just, you know, just very uh, fresh, dynamic, open. Uh, and, you know, I just uh, relay what they're saying. But so you can, you can ask questions interactively. And yeah, that's what I was going to say there. So you can ask the questions interactively. And, um, but I guess if there's a message for you to hear that's prominent right now in this particular life, or is there sometimes messages which come in that are actually attached to what are, well, most of us would call past lives, but I tend to think that they're, those past lives are happening right now. Um, yes. But there's a, there'll be a message that's coming in that maybe, you know, some, from some life, there's something you've carried on that, that, that you need to heal that would help you with the issues that maybe are prominent with, the, with what you're coming to you for. Yes. Yes, they, they will very often talk about past lives. Oftentimes when I open the records, the, the record keepers are, are just full of information. <laughs> and they just start 
channeling stuff even before the questions are asked. <laughs> and it's wonderful. Everyone's record keepers are different. I mean, I've, I've seen some that are very serious. I've felt some that are very, uh, you know, mischievous and, del and delightful. And I've seen others that are just, you know, concentrated and busy. And they're all different, but we're all different. Your record keepers have been with you since the very instant you became you. And in a universe that's open-ended and didn't begin and won't end, that's an interesting concept, but there it is. Absolutely it is. So, okay, so it is a form of channeling, you, you know, when you're connected with these record keepers then. Yes. And when did it you... It is a form of yeah. channeling. Did you feel that, that like, um, obviously you're trained, aren't you, uh, with this work? And, um, oh, your website for, for this as well. You've got two websites. And now th when we make this recording right now, they're just down for maintenance. But obviously for future use, they're going to be there. What are the two websites that you've got? Okay, well, as this, uh, as this shows, it's yourakashicwisdom.com. And the other is Nicola Tesla Channel.com. So, you know, Nicola Tesla Channel is just, of course, one word in lowercase. Well, uh, I'm, I have a Facebook page. I have two Facebook pages. One is under my name, Francesca Toman, which is my writer's page. And then I have uh, your Akashic Wisdom uh, uh, Facebook page, too. You've seen them. And so, you know, you can always message me there or, uh, you know, find the information from that page and write my email. And your email address is? Francesca, F-R-A-N-C-E-S-C-A, -E Starhand, S-T-A-R-H-A-N-D, sorry, N-D, uh, gmail.com. Well, that sounds like a very interesting way to get a reading with yourself. I guess when you got into the, the work of um, uh, the, the Akashic readings, do, I mean, I, what was the pull to do that? I guess, you know, you had because you, you, you were channeling at the time, weren't you, when you were training with uh, uh, someone, well, with your mentor, I guess you would call her, uh, that taught you in the ways of the, the Akashic records how to access them. But what was the pull yeah. there to do that work, do you think? Well, um. It was wonderful. I went to the Whole Life Expo and saw a picture of the teacher, the head of your, uh, Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom, Lisa Barnett. Uh, she's still in the Bay Area. She still has classes. She has online classes. So just Google uh, either uh, Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom or Lisa Barnett and you'll find stuff. But uh, I, had, I took one look at her and said, I need to see that person. And so we saw her. This is the first time she spoke. And I said, this is what this is my next step. I just knew this is my next step. Yes, absolutely. And you went along with that um, with that energy. And uh, I guess now, you know, you've incorporated incorporated that in your work. And, uh, you know, because some people, when they watch this, they, they, they may feel, you know, I really want a channeled reading uh, with uh, Francesca. Uh, but uh, I guess I guess in a sense, would you what well, i suppose it's not a channel reading but it is isn't it in a, in a sense well it uses some of the same um mental channel uh, uh, structures as channeling does but i can tell the difference uh i know when i'm channeling i know when i'm imagining i know when i'm uh you know accessing the records uh you know channeling is a very different thing uh, pure channeling, one to one, one being, uh, you know, is different than than pulling up the, you know, the whole uh, field of the records and the record keepers. Yeah, this is a much more personal type of reading, isn't it? In a sense, as well, yeah. and. Um... I guess sometimes uh, as well, messages just pop out, don't they? And uh, you know, it's not always about. Um, what you think you've gone there for i suppose you know there, there can be other reasons that, that are pulling you to get a reading as well that um uh, and you can uh, you can ask uh, most questions with that type of uh, a car ship reading as well can't you oh yes interesting oh yes all right that uh well thank you for that as well could you um just think about this could you actually ask questions about um uh relationships as well i mean is, is that a sort of oh, frequently 
relationships, how to work with people in your life now, uh, and also their past life connections, that comes up really easily. The only stipulation is, and this is from the, from the record keepers, the, the masters, uh, we will not read a child, uh, a child, period, anyone up to the age of 18. Now, a mother can ask, I have these two children and they keep fighting and you can give advice to the mother and give some sort of general, but you can't read the child him or herself because they don't want to interfere, interfere with the child's process and changes and, and so on. And when, you know, when that person becomes 18, it's kind of like, okay, they've got enough, <laughs> they've got enough to run their own ship with. Okay. Is there anything more that you might like to add towards the reading as well? Like, um, is there anything that I maybe missed out that, uh, you know, the experience of it or oh. just trying to think, is there anything that, that, that I've missed out on that? Well, uh, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's very personable. You know, the record keepers love the people that they have the records of. I mean, there's just so much love and so much, um, you know, pure support and caring and excitement when when you know you help them you help your client discover something uh and uh very frequently the clients say yeah that's right and oh yeah that's right and that you know that i treasure those i try to treasure those moments because that's what my next step was i wanted to be able to get something that i knew was absolutely correct just let that yeah through. yeah yeah that's what well, it's you know i guess you're always testing your discernment aren't you you're always testing you know you want to make sure that you're connected and on right yes yeah oh, yeah. yes yeah you know that that well thank you for that and uh again uh we'll link that in the description below the readings that you do um let's just go to that part as well the discernment I guess that was, I can tell that that's always, you know, something that you always, you know, keep in check, you know. Um, and I suppose, especially with uh, you know, some of the more recent channeling you do, how do you discern that if someone wants to channel, how do they, how, what would you advise them is the best way to discern, to make sure they're not um, in the imagination too much and, you know, or maybe not at all, but they're more into the, you know, this, uh, the, a part of them that's coming through that, that that's more wiser, I suppose, than, and, and more, um, what would you say, maybe more loving? I mean, it sounds terrible. There's a part that comes through that's more loving than you, but th there's a, it's, 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 it's like a greater part that's not you. You know it, don't you, that it's not you. It's, it's separate, isn't it? It's very difficult to explain. Yes, it is. Um, it's a bit like, uh, particularly with the extraterrestrials who are really fun to channel, uh, it's kind of like you sit back in the back seat and you let them drive your mind. You know, it's like you're there, so you can say, "Don't turn left; you're going the wrong way," or something. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, <laughs> um, but basically, you you allow them to, you know, make you know drive your mind. And what's really interesting is you can be very clear in the process of channeling what's being said, how it's being said, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you get out of the channeling, and it tends to disappear like a dream very quickly and yet it isn't a dream no and uh, do you think we all have the ability to channel in a sense even if it was just our higher self oh yeah yeah if if someone is able to meditate even if it's just the simplest meditation in the world which is what betty bethers was uh, providing all those years ago uh, if you can meditate you can perceive information that is not yours and that is the beginning of channeling if you can uh you know i i am jealous of the people who can see spirits i can't i'm clairaudient and clairsentient <laughs> but i can't see spirits but uh you know if you can see spirits man it's it's you, you know you can't argue with that right <laughs> yeah yeah so much could be said from here couldn't it so uh yeah i guess you're all about empowering people um and, and you know and that's why you want the discernment to be correct and you're always checking in with yourself and yeah uh, if someone wants to channel their higher self there's still a lot of wisdom isn't there even in the higher self oh gosh yes 
because the higher self is crafted of the divine being. I mean, what can't you find in the divine being, I'd like to know? <laughs> well, some people may say, oh, you know, Kev, you're only channeling your higher self, right? Um, and, I, and I think, well, yeah, but it's damn, it seems a lot, well, you know, it just seems to have all, all the energy that feels, that feels that it's giving the right direction for me. Do you know what I mean? And, and it just, it feels very wise and it knows. Yeah. If it, listen, if it gives you the information you need and it's helpful and it's loving and it's, it makes you move forward elegantly, who cares where it comes from to a certain extent? You know, it's when you, when you touch with love, you get love back. Yes, absolutely. How many beings then, or entities, or how I'm using these words? You may not use these words, but th this this energy have you channeled? That's that's separate to yourself. I mean, how many kind of different? Well, that's where that's where these uh, the other books come from. And Nikola and Tesla and I worked quite extensively for several years. He's taking a vacation. <laughs> uh, we have two other books. Uh, we have Nikola Tesla presents. Afterlife lessons from famous people, and um, this this famous personalities. This this has to do with a great many uh, people. It, we have uh, let's see, we have Laurel and Hardy. We have uh, you know various authors. We have anyone from Elizabeth Cady Stanton to Mark Twain. That was delightful. Uh, Rudyard Kipling. Uh, Let's see, Charlie Chaplin. Oh, he was really excellent. You know, so that gives you an idea. We have a whole number in here. And the most recent book for, about which we're very proud is Channel Human Wisdom. Uh, because that was an extensive, uh, almost 40 people. And, you know, uh, all of them different. We did, we did, uh, uh, Mark Twain again. He he had to keep. He had to have another article. <laughs> and uh, let me ask you as well. I hate button in here, but a, a lot of these people that you've channeled, the, the, this was from um, magazines that had, you'd been working with in the past. Some of them that had asked you to uh, channel some of these um, en energies. Right. Or? Well, um, a lot of that happened with uh, Nikola Tesla presents. Uh, I told you, I told you the delightful story of uh, I was working with Spirit Speaks and I was enjoying channeling for Oban so much. I I made my uh, crafted myself my own little uh, newsletter and sent it out, and then various people uh, received it. But there was a fellow in the East Coast who said, uh, "Can you channel um, Laurel and Hardy?" Because he had this uh, magazine that called Lighten Up. Because right around at that time, everybody was panicking about oh, the change of the century. Everything is going to go to go to hell in a handbasket. I said, I said, lighten up, you know, please. So uh, he asked if I, I could channel Laurel and Hadi. I said, yes, sure, I can. And and I did. And, and so it ended up being when he finally asked me to channel Nikola Tesla. I told Nikola, stay here. I want to I want to work with you. Don't leave. Don't leave. And so I put some of yeah, I put some of what he channeled into the uh, Familiar Spirits magazine. So, you know, Obahan and Nicola and, and a couple of other beings here and there, some elves. That was really fun. Uh, so, but that was, uh, uh, that was back then <laughs> in, the, in the 90s. And then I sort of uh, shifted on to something else, but then I picked it all up uh, in the uh let's see 20 uh 20 2006 7 8 that's you know as i went away for a while came back but and that's when i was working with uh, nicola does almost exclusively wow and now you've also done children's books as well you've got the uh Yes. Auntie Duck story rhymes. Um, I yeah. believe that's sort of a pre-reader age. I think it was. I think they were yeah. written around 2015. Yeah. Beginning readers and, uh, you know, uh, non-readers so that the mother can read. But, uh, yeah, we also have uh, the Silver Spun Stories, which are for uh, nine and ten-year-olds. 
And these are, I, I happen to like them very much, the stories. Of course, I wouldn't write them if I did. Yeah, but let me, let me just say, the, the, you know, these for children, these are self-empowerment, that, you know, they're encouraging, you know, they're, yes. they're looking at valuing others and yourself, that they're all these positive things. Yeah, I know you, positive, magical. Yeah. And, and you were consciously putting this in there, but where was the inspiration to do these children's stories as well? Okay. Some of them I sort of almost received download. There's one called When Wolverine Came, and it was a gift. Uh, it's kind of like I, it's, it was almost channeled, uh, but it's a story of, uh, you know, the animals in the forest, and they started arguing, oh, well, you know, rabbit gets so much of this, and I want, you know, and they had all these quarreling, and then, but then the, the spirits of eagle and bear, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the great spirits would say, you know, hey, guys, slow down, you can't keep arguing like this, and so what the great spirit gave the animals to straighten them up was wolverine, you know, who didn't care about anybody and ate everybody. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Uh, and there was another story that actually was a dream. I mean, I woke up and it was like the story was right there. I mean, I love that kind of gift that I get. That one was called The Serevna and the Mares of the Dawn. And it was this, this wonderful story about this prince and princess whose father had, you know, was just heartbroken because of uh, his, in the queen's death. And he was shutting the, the, the uh, kingdom down and everything. And so the Sarevna called, you know, ended up working with the mayors of the dawn to open things up again, in short. <laughs> but a lot of these are just gifts and from, you know, the loving creativity of the universe itself. And I treasure them. That is so beautiful that you you, you brought them through. And, uh, you know, there's a book for every year here almost that you've done, right? <laughs> or books for, for, for some years. Uh, you did a, you've done a lot of writing. And, and these are, are these self-published? I don't think they are, are they? Yes, they are. Are they? Okay. Are they all self-published? Well, I, I published through uh, Empowered Whole Being Press. Okay, so there is a pre Okay, yes, yes, yes. That's where I'm getting the confusion from. Okay, oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. So, yes, and they're uh, self-published, but, but in the spiritual field, I believe, aren't they? In the empowerment field. Yeah. Yes. Very much. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they've got some good authors on there well, as well. Semi-self-published. I mean, she, she does all... <laughs> my dear publisher does all the real work. Finding yeah, finding the a ISBN and she gets things together with New Leaf uh, distributors and, and you know she does a lot of work and she does she d does these covers you know she is a wonderful graphic artist. So okay, I know that you've uh, obviously. Um brought into that in the acceptance that you know um this is a real phenomenon that's happening to you and when i've gone over some of the nikol tesla books i know this is a new physics that he presents in these books which isn't new it all sort of regurgitated information this is new information right very much see he sees um physics from his side of the veil right and so he sees it as a multi-dimensional structure uh, so, okay, uh, there are three essential, uh, you know, in brief, there are three essential dimensions. One is the zero dimension, which is everywhere and in no one place, and the dimension of identity. Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. And then the, the dimension of the primordial chaos. Now, we, we're used to dimensions taking up space. But the dimension of identity uh, affects all other dimensions and modifies all other dimensions, including the zero dimension, which is you could call God if you wish. But uh, it's like the dimension of identity, we do it all the time. You know, we're sweeping the room, right? And we have this little pile of, you know, fluff and bits and stuff that we've swept up. And it you know, it has shifted its identity into a pile 
instead of a little bit over here and a little bit there, or you, you're, you're making meatballs or something, you, you take the raisins and the breadcrumbs and the egg and the spices and, and you mix it all up. And as you're mixing it, you realize there's a moment where the mixture has become meatball mixture. It's not just, uh, you know, hamburger and, and raisins and an egg, you know? So we work with the dimension of identity constantly. And uh, mothers work with it, of course, and, and fathers work with it, of course, because they're raising their children and perceiving the identity and, and helping the child to craft his or her identity. But so it's, it's, these are the three essential dimensions. Huh. D now, you, yeah, when go, ahead. We, go ahead. When I came across uh, uh, string theory, uh, Nicola said, that's it. Except he doesn't think that there are 11 dimensions. He insists that there are 12 uh, workable dimensions. Actually, there are an infinite number of dimensions from one point of view. But in terms of what you can actually factor mathematically, if you work at it, uh, you know, is 12 dimensions. And there are the enfolded dimensions, and then there are the uh, expressed dimensions or the unfolded dimensions. So we go on along about that. Two other aspects, uh, one is paralyte. Uh, paralyte is like the core essence of light that has no vibration. It's really trippy. And parasound is, um, they're using that term in science now too, but, he, but Nikola Tesla means something slightly different. Uh, and then there's the, the torsion fields. Oh man, the torsion fields are really interesting. We have the, like the field of numeration, and uh, uh, ether, you know, the etheric field is uh, a torsion field. It shapes things, right? Numeration, numeration and proportion and translation and, uh, you know, magnetism and uh, uh, itself, they all work to, you know, <laughs> do wonderful things with matter <laughs> and time and light and so, it's like it's he, he doesn't see physics as an interaction of particles. He sees it as a constant interaction, reinteraction of the unfolded dimensions and the unfolded dimensions. Now, what is your background in physics and science then? Um, I'm an artist. <laughs> I'm a writer. I read. I read physics. I'm fascinated by it. Um, not a math not a mathematician. So he, you know, as I said, he he said, okay, you know, if you're listening to me, I'll 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 take it. If if we ever find uh, a scientist who is willing to channel Nikola Tesla, I'm sure he'd jump at the chance. But <laughs> I don't know if he's found any such a person. I, I get the feeling that the information in these uh, uh, Nikola Tesla books, and there's three books, there's three volumes. Five. Of course, okay. there is five. Yes. We, we, yeah, we have uh, volume one, which is where he just presents the new physics. Uh, just, you know, the bare bones. It's almost like he's giving a college course, but also he has a whole number of really, really unusual meditations in it, also like creating spiritual enzymes. And I've used them, and they're quite effective. Now, this one was very interesting. In here, we have sort of a correspondence between Nikola Tesla and the medical doctor, Dr. Todd Ovakaitis. And uh, basically, because I, I went up to him uh, at a meeting and said, because he was presenting something else, and said, um, I've been channeling Tesla. Would you be interested? And he said, yes, please send me anything he has. And so I sent him, you know, because I was still working with the Nikola Tesla, you know, for the familiar spirits at that time. And he said, let's, you know, just tell me whatever he says. So he would ask questions. So we would answer his questions. So we, we would send him more information. And so we had sort of a back and forth for, for several years. But uh, this particular one is, is superlative because it has manifestation magic. This was quite a joyful challenge for both of us because we got the physics of magic. And I also found out that I'm not a natural magician. You know, I don't, I, I don't use manifestation magic the way you can using 
because there's, there's three aspects. You know, you have the desire, and you have the ability, and then you have the training. Uh, if you don't have a desire to use it, you don't use it. <laughs> so let me get this right. So you're, so, uh, did you say seven years there? Seven years of back and forth communication with this gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and where did that material end up? It's ended up in the book. Most of it's in yeah. in the. Yep. How, how much? That of it? is in the okay. first half of volume two. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to volume three of them. Volume three is even more of his physics and also um, human issues like language and, uh, you know, pain, you know, why the why of pain and what it means. But uh, he also had a wonderful time. And this was before we, were, we wrote the two books on, uh, you know, channeling other people. He, he relayed some information from Carl Jung, uh, you know, how to remain, uh, how to raise Lemurian children, and also uh, the natural, uh, the natural and the human self. I'd have to get the actual quote, but, uh, you know, it's like, we didn't channel uh, Jung himself, but, you know, Nikola Tesla likes to hang out with all these folks and he takes notes and so this is what I learned, this is what I learned, this is what I learned. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have new physics and this, this, this is full of every aspect of his physics because, uh, you know, the physics, the, the multidimensional physics that he perceives had, you know, started small and then was built and then built upon and built upon and built upon. Uh, so we have that. Uh, oh, let's see, we have, oh yeah, oh yes, we have lovely things. Uh, three whole chapters on new physics, uh, new concepts of time and DNA, uh, more on the dimension of identity, the nature of con uh, consciousness, the offset angles of light, life and light, you know, and a couple of very interesting af uh, afterwards. Now this happens to be my my uh, proof copy, but this is volume four. I'm sorry, volume five, which is new humanity. Uh, and so after all of that, he said, "I'm taking a vacation." <laughs> but we had, you know, like. Uh, toxic manifestation magic, because on volume two, we were talking about manifestation magic. And then people do use magic, have used magic uh, with toxicity. Uh, you know, so human consciousness and the psyche, uh, you know, the, uh, the human paradox. And uh, so when you, you know, say magic, when you say magic, you mean um, what, what is magic in, when you're referencing it, when you're referring to it? Yeah. Uh, magic in the in the sense of physics of magic is like a multidimensional slope. Uh, in a sense that you can put you can gather energy, and you gain energy. Uh, magic is in in brief, anything that gives you more energy back. I mean, you put a certain amount of energy into something, and it's exothermic you know, relatively speaking, I mean, not truly, but it's like um, the sum is greater, than, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, but the the whole is created by the multidimensional slope. It's a lot more complex than that. He goes into it at great depth. Did he lose you at any time with all this information? Were there times when you were like, I just don't get what's being said here, but I'm going to go with it. You felt that you understood it. No, he, he, he used every scrap of my vocabulary and every scrap of what I knew, but I didn't lose him. Only a couple of times um, when, we were do, when we were working with magic, it was kind of like we were trying to pull it down from the very core of reality itself, and we didn't lose him, but it was, it was some of the most difficult work we'd done. It just seems to be that, that, that you've built a legacy here of some amazing uh, information that yeah. uh, if only people with the right mindset would listen to it. Well, actually, do, yeah. do, do, do you know, has this come across uh, other physicists who have taken a bit of an interest in it silently, maybe? 
Yeah, I've 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 heard some people who've read it and, and find it found it very good, and several of the meditations are extremely uh, unusual and useful. I mean, spiritual enzymes really work. I mean, it's like an enzyme is something that helps a process, a you know, a chemical process or a physical or an emotional process work better. Uh, it's not a cure all. It's not like, hey, I can do my spiritual enzymes and suddenly I'm healed. No, it's just like, okay, um, using the spiritual enzyme of healing, which you do craft yourself, which is where it's really fun. Uh, you craft your own enzymes and when, you know, you use them when you need them. It's like, uh, you know, crafting one to, you know, relief from pain. You know, there's, there's one to uh, open dreams. You, you craft your own. And that's the real fun. That's all in volume one. Volume one. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you go on to talk about um, healing as well. Multidimensional healing in, in, in uh, book two, I think it is. Um, wh yeah. what, is uh, what is that then? Multidimensional healing. Is that healing on multidimensional levels? I mean, for, for what purpose? Yeah. Well, to some extent, that basically is the, uh, you know, the distillation of the correspondence that Dr. Todd Avakaitis and uh, Nikola Tesla had. And uh, we did brush against, you know, the multidimensional aspects of healing, uh, partly dependent upon the doctor's questions. But at that time, you know, I stayed with the doctor's questions. Well, multidimensional uh, in the sense that this could be a, what you're going through right now could be related to some other aspect of you somewhere else. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're a lot bigger than we think we are. <laughs> uh, we're more able than we think we are. We are. Uh, okay, let me let me put this. We put just this, have to. This is fascinating. Open. Yeah, I'm not. I'm trying not to interrupt. Please don't think I'm doing it on this on purpose, right? But um, okay, so it's. I think someone came on the show not too long ago, uh, maybe week, weeks ago, where they were like, you know, this patient came to me. He had a, you know, uh, a, uh, an injury to his right side of his leg and uh, he would continuously injure that right side until under regression it was showing to him that yeah that was a a wound from a past life that was um you you, you never uh, it has such a big impact on you it's still here now and until you heal that past life you're not going to heal it here is that the kind of multidimensional healing that you might be referring to or more than that or different to that or both <laughs> uh well, in volume two, we didn't we didn't uh, examine that particular aspect at any great depth. However, uh, when opening the Akashic records, uh, that kind of information can be pertained. Uh, there are other methods such as um, uh, ancestral lineage. Uh, you know that is a very very valuable source. Uh, you know source of information and and healing is is just you know disentangling and diffusing your ancestral lineages but uh yeah working with past lives but you can do it in so many ways you know past life regression works beautifully well uh the akashic records uh you know you can uh find out where was the source you know where did this first start and how we can you know shift that and heal that and so on but it's um there's so many ways for healing and it's just wondrous manifestation let's just just touch on that just quickly as well so what were some of his ideas on manifestation then if there was anything simple would you say what did you take okay. away from it <laughs> let me ref see that's a difficulty you know i know i know of all of this stuff but i don't know it quite as well as i ought to because of course when i put it down I, it's not in my brain anymore <laughs> but okay we have uh Oh man. Okay, manifestation magic. Let's get back here. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this is, of course, this is volume five. It's not volume two. No wonder I'm confused. Hello. <laughs> Pardon me while I rearrange my brain. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Like section one is the human factors and manifestation magic. Section two is anti-magic anti and evil magic and manifestation. Section three is sources of manifestation magic. Section four is distilling manifestation magic. Uh, 
in the spirit, soul, body, mind, and emotions. So he shows you the processes for all of those. And uh, section five is some magical recipes, <laughs> just for fun. But it's, uh, you know, uh, the spiritual enzymes, you have to go through this whole process, but you only have to do it once. With the manifestation magic, you have to go through this process, but you only have to do it once. So, and then, you know, refurbish once in a while, you know, this make up. But the, the process of manifestation magic um, has as much to do with attunement to the multidimensional layers of reality and the multidimensional layers of yourself and aligning them. So that's it in a nutshell. There is a whole heap of great information in these books that uh, how uh, in, in one interview would ever sort of, you know, uh, touch upon. I mean, you, you, you could just be, you know, you know, doing a couple of interviews, just diving into the, the uh, Nikola Tesla books. Um, incredible. I mean, what, what's what's your take on it now? You look back and you've done all this work. What do you feel about what you've committed to to writing? I'm honored. I am honored by. He has so much compassion for the world. He has so much genuine love for humanity. And he is patient and unfailingly kind and, uh, and smart, so smart, just really, really intelligent. And, well, of course, you know, he's a genius, but, um, you know, it's interesting. You can be smart and stupid at the same time. <laughs> you can have all sorts of uh, you learn, learning of how things, things work, but you don't understand people. He understands people as well as physics. So that's why we have volume four and five, Physics and New Humanity, and also the uh, channel Human Wisdom. Uh, you, know, that, you know, that one has a number of fascinating people like Oliver, Weld, Oliver Wendell Holmes. Sorry about that. Uh, senior, uh, see, senior and junior. Um, Aristotle, Pythagoras, Marie Antoinette. That was really interesting, channeling Marie Antoinette. Uh, yeah, and Samuel Johnson and Samuel Jordan Kirkwood and John Jay and Clarence Darrow and uh, a couple of actresses, you know, an actress who didn't want to say her name. But of course, if you study it, you could figure it out. But she didn't want to, she didn't want to say it. What was their main message, do you think, in a sense? Was it, was it about the direction that mankind was going in, or was it, was it just their, what they'd learned in, the, in their lifetime and what they just yeah. wanted to share with yourself, yeah? Both, both. What they've learned and how they see it from, from you know, their present afterlife state, but also what's going on in the present world and um, their observations of, you know, what is going on in the present world. Uh, you just you have to read the books and, and, and find out what they say you know like of course what's the common take on it do you think uh, if there was a sort of direction that we're going in or was there sort of uh, something that you could remember what was said um in, in the direction that mankind's yeah. going well there are a couple of things like for instance mark twain was talking about learning how to see god in every person and um in um, Nicola Tesla Presents, we had uh, Rachel Carlson uh, who uh, worked on, you know, what, you know, wh why pain? You know, why is pain the way it is? And so uh, it's like hearing the cries of humanity. And, it, you know, like, you know, this is breaking my heart. This is, I can't deal with this. I, I, I don't know how to, I, I, you know, this is just answering some of the cries of humanity. And I'm honored. I am so honored to work with these people, uh, all, of, all of these people. You know, I've been completely blown away. Now, in modern times, there's also a fair amount of discussion about race issues. I mean, we had Harriet Beecher Stowe and also Minnie Mason. Minnie Mason was a black woman who used to 
have uh, you know uh, real estate in Los Angeles. You know, uh, it's like they're not accusatory, they're not judgmental, but they are. They discern. You know, there's a big difference between discernment and judgment. You know, you can discern something without judgment. So they are discerning things without judgment. Uh, one thing that we need to all learn sometimes, don't we? <laughs> in the times <laughs> that we live in, most definitely. I mean, God, uh, we, we, we've seemed to have lost our, our discernment and we want to be told what to think or what to say, what to do. Well, some of us do, don't we? And I'm, I'm not talking about from a relig- religious perspective. I'm just saying that, we, you know, just with what, you know, the times that we live in right now. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. That is that seems to be the challenge of our time is is discernment and also discerning with the heart, discerning with the soul. Yes, well, I can certainly relate that to relationships as well. <laughs> so, in so many ways, discernment, right? So, um, so how easy is it then for you to sort of you know switch into that channeling mode? Is it fairly pretty, easy. Fairly easy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If if I am if I'm speaking, uh, there's a you know like you say there's some people who you know go through a door or go downstairs or something. I, I have a little you know method of entry. This is basically to to make sure that I'm truly aligned, and you know basically you'll tell you can tell when there's somebody else here. You can see it. Because you're, lo- you know, you're watching me, right? Uh, uh, you can see it. You can tell it in the in the voice, in the cadence, in the motions, in the breathing. Uh, I used to channel some for a friend of mine. She says every time you take that in breath, I know it's the person that she wanted to talk to. Who would I love to talk to? Or, you know, it's always been for me when I do this, it's always been whoever's going to come through, whoever's, you know, you know whatever energy is like in alignment for this session. <laughs> <laughs> but if I um, could. I kind of sort of think they'd like you to ask for somebody specific because if you start, if you open up the whole thing, it's kind of like long jam. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Because I, yeah, I could imagine that actually with the line that can form sometimes, like, "Oh my God, there's a chance to talk. Come on, quick!" <laughs> no, it, it's not like that. But I imagine that there, there are those that want want their say. Um, gosh, that's a question, isn't it? Who would I like to to bring through? Um, I, I, yeah, the, well, I get, I'm getting Edgar Casey, like the feeling of Edgar yeah. Casey. Um, but I'm at the, but that my mental mind's like, why, why bother? Come on, there must be someone else. You know, there's so many, you know, no, no, no disrespectful way. It's just like, uh, well, I'll go with it. I think I'm feeling the, the the pull to say Casey, Edgar Casey. Okay. Uh, well, you know, my guys are telling me he's he's uh, available and and willing, and and he sort of chuck. It's kind of like I can see him over there, kind of feel him over there. He's chuckling. <laughs> Kevin, you know why you want to talk to me. You remember working with me in Atlantis, and you thought very highly of me then, and you think very highly of me now. It is my pleasure to talk. Hello, old friend. Funny enough, you know, there's something about that, isn't there? Atlantis, yes, I do feel that. Um, I've not really explored it, but I know it's there. So that's where we would have connected. Yeah, okay. Was one of the first places we did. Um, you, you loved working with light. You loved working with optics and light and the crystals that, you know, you were in that sense, quite the engineer. And it was a little bit though, (laughs) I have this delightful 
did he from her mind, uh, you know, about Werner von Braun, uh, you know, uh, I just send them up where they come down. It's not my department. You know, it's like you were fat, you were so fascinated with the uh, the optics and how light worked with the crystals and the crystals shaped light and how you could shape light with the crystals and then you would you lived with the fascination, but you didn't always look so clearly on what it was used for. And it was eventually, as you know, uh, used for very selfish ends. You were not selfish with that, but you were a little oblivious. You were a little uh, conscious and in, in inattention at the time. But you loved working with me because what I did was channel different kinds of light. Now, there's visible light, and of course, there are all the other uh, radio waves and gamma, gamma waves and all those. Those are forms of light but it's still a form of light that is in the physical reality. There are other forms of light that aren't even physical, that aren't, that are from other realms, other universes, other layers of reality, for lack of a better word. So uh, I was working with that kind of light then. And so it, it, it was uh, sometimes very difficult. It's like, if you could imagine two photographs or three photographs uh, laid one upon the other, it was a little hard to tell which one was. All right, uh, I could not have driven a car in that state, but you you lo- you cared for me very much. You were um, distantly related by blood, but uh, I took you on as my student, and it was your your job to make sure that I came back in one piece after going through all these different layers and and you know working simultaneous layers because similarly as to uh, okay you say you remember slides right you know not not photographs on paper but slides that you can see the light through well it, you know I would have like four or five slides and then you shift them and then all of a sudden there's a place where all of the slides have the same opening. And that's what I was working for, to uh, access the divine intelligence within the light. That's what I was working on. And you genuinely admired what I was doing. And uh, I thought you were a competent enough uh, engineer. And so uh, we, at that time, this was in the early part of um, Atlantis's reign uh, and, and so we did a we did a great deal of stuff that was just plain fun, but no. Um, and you knew me in uh, Egypt, of course, uh, Mesopotamia, um, okay, uh, parts of South America. Now there are areas that have, uh, you know, gone under the ocean, of course, too. Uh, so the world has changed more than most people realize. It's not just Gondwana land breaking up and opening, but there's there's rising land and, and falling land. Uh, and, uh, you know, as Atlantis did and as Lemuria did. Uh, uh, Lemuria was originally a huge s- series of mountains. And then because there was pressure from underneath, and then when the pressure uh, dissipated, then the island flowed down. And so now we just have a few islands poking up ab- above the waves. Uh, now, the other place we, where, you need, where you knew me, uh, okay, um, yes, you, uh, you were actually a magician in the real sense. You actually worked with, with genuine magic. Uh, and you and I were originally, uh, you know, uh, uh, fighting with each other, but we eventually realized that, hey, we're, we're just wasting our energy here. Let's work together. And, but I was able to persuade you to, to use magic for larger uh, things. And it's like when you have uh, the right kind of magic, and 
you know, an army is coming, first of all, you can perceive the army is coming to this town or this village or this city. And you can find ways of shifting the earth and shifting the light itself so that the city is protected, so the town is protected. So you and I did a lot of that work together. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thought about being an engineer, you know, in obviously in this lifetime, actually, I, I, I had trained to be an engineer uh, well, prior to doing all this type of work a long time ago, like another lifetime now in this life. And uh, yeah, to think that, that I was, you know, being a, an engineer in a previous lifetime, I, I could definitely go there um, with, with yourself. Um, I mean, just the idea of, 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 of Atlantis, I mean, I can't, I can't, I have no physical, you know, no recollection of what, uh, you know, without, without channeling myself, you know, with, with what, what that would have looked like to the, the technology and, um, yeah, just, just what, what, what life was like there. Um, but we, yeah. So what, what about the, uh, when, when you had your Casey, um, center you know obviously so you you've got the um you did your work in this life as a as a casey that, that i know or know of um was there any connection there at the, the, the edgar casey center or before the casey center was formed or where you and i knew each other i'm, I'm not following the question i apologize yeah 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 i guess that's what i'm saying no I, I guess that's what i'm trying to say yeah yeah did we know each other in in, in your lifetime when you were edgar casey you heard of me you were intrigued you were fascinated but you were busy. Yeah, with that other life, you were busy. This, you were in the Crimea and you were trying, uh, you know, that, that, that whole area is so soaked with blood and wars and, and terror and misery. Uh, what you were doing partly was trying to heal that and also trying to uh, rescue some people. So, uh, this was, of course, before World War II. But you did almost a very similar, uh, you know, to, to rescue the Jews from the pogroms. Uh, you know, you, you worked, you have been almost unfailingly working for the betterment of humanity ever since a couple of lifetimes where you realized, oops, <laughs> I did that. Oh, my goodness. As like when you realized uh, you were out of body at the time, but when you realized that what you had learned with optics could be used uh, for uh, uh, it's uh, it's a kind of hypnosis, but I don't know that I could or should explain it at this time, uh, where you could use that to uh, rewrite someone's desires. Uh, you know, and make them think that what they're desiring now is what they really desire. It was almost like turning hypnosis into an addiction, you know, or 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 putting an addiction into so you were so shocked. Because you you couldn't imagine, but there were those in latter Atlantis who did. And also in uh, Egypt. They, you know, they, they came with, with knowledge of hypnosis and they used it for very selfish purposes. Like a misuse uh, of power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, you actually had a couple of lives when that happened to you. So you could see how it felt, you know, to suddenly uh, change. And then you don't know that you're changing when you're changing, except that everyone who knows you realizes you're not you anymore. What happened? Uh, and you had a life where you were actually the, uh, what is the term? When, when you have a, when, a magician's assistant, assistant. But this man was, was uh, you know, uh, 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 very uh, selfish and very, um, he, he wanted to, uh, use what he knew to uh you know to scare people to to make them you know look to him as his their savior and uh you were his assistant you were a woman at the time and he abused you terribly but you could see from that point of view uh the consequences of 
uh, you know, good tools in evil hands. Uh, so that was a life where you where you studied that in your own living experience. So you got that lesson. <laughs> you got that lesson. And it's, this is without judgment, you must understand, because this, the soul wants to see this side and then that side and then this side and then that side. And then, you know, and then until you finally have the whole, uh, the whole story and you can choose with wisdom. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I said at the beginning, you know, oh, I don't know if I've done the right thing, you know, in my head, like, you know, asking for Casey to come through because, you know, there's there's so many that that I could have asked. But uh, I, I guess um, somewhere you must be on my mind, right, for me to to have asked. And um, you, I, yeah, no, I, I do feel that we're working together in this lifetime. In, yes. in, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. How are you working with me then? Is it more like a, a, if there was a, a roundtable panel? That you're part of that panel, or um, that's me. That's me trying to put my way of understanding it for yeah. the audience. Yeah. Yes. Oftentimes it is the roundtable panel. Uh, oftentimes I am kind of like a, an amicus curiae. In other words, uh, I'm not exactly one of your guides, but I work with your guides, and I work with you a lot in the dreams, uh, in the dream space, and some of we just we just hang out. <laughs> you know, we just relax. We enjoy each other's company. Uh, so it's not all learning. Uh, and I help you. Uh, okay, your literal physical brain gets trained, gets uh, shifted. Now, you do know that if some people have, when they have uh, brain damage, they can suddenly play the piano. There, it, there are structures within the brain that are not called upon. Uh, now, I will grant you that you actually use more than just 10% of your brain, but there are, there are aspects that you can, uh, can open up. And this, you can open up gently with dreams and with experiences on the dream plane. So that's a lot of what we're doing. Uh, also, it is to, uh, you know, you do, you do your engineering, but, uh, what I'm hoping to present to you, and you can start looking for it, is a way of using engineering uh, in a spiritual sense, not just a physical sense, but in the positive spiritual sense, as it was used negatively in later uh, Atlantis, but how to use, uh, it's not just using sound and color, but it is, there's a synergy of effects that it would be too complicated to explain at this time, but that's partly what we're, what we're working on, you and I, when you're dreaming, is how to get a synergy of effects so that uh, it's similar to the what they call the hemisync, is when they have you know two slightly different rhythms on either side of the brain, and that causes a specific effect and opens up, uh, opens you up to the higher uh, the higher vibrations, the higher register of your own brain. But you know, we're working on something similar, and I don't want to. I, I don't want to give it away right now because we both of us want you to do it your way. Well, since I've got you here, yes. let me try to ask some questions as well for the for the wider audience as well. So thank you for. Of course. Because I could go on and on uh, speaking to you right now, and um, <laughs> so many questions. Ask, ask. <laughs> Yeah. Ask the channel for a correspondence. She'll be happy. Oh, yes. But I yes, think so. For everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I don't feel that you've reincarnated uh, um, anytime soon, or you're going to reincarnate anytime soon. Um, what is your purpose now for humanity, would you say? What, what, is your, what, what do you feel is your, not reason for existing, because you, you, cause, cause you exist, but what, what is it you're doing right now, would you say, for the wider to open up, audience? To open up kindness to open up empathy, compassion, generosity, to open up the imagination that allows you to walk in someone else's shoes, you know, to, to, to reacquaint humanity with sweetness, kindness. Um, the aspects of love that help everyone to work together. That's my main focus right now. 
where do you see us going? Because obviously, uh, do you have do you have an ability to see the potential of where mankind is going, or the actual of where mankind is going? Which one would it be? Do you think? <laughs> It's in a very real way more potentials than actuality because uh, this being an infinite universe of infinite infinities, uh, every choice does indeed create a new universe. Now, sometimes they burgeon out and sometimes they recoalesce, and sometimes they burgeon out and then, you know, butt off and, and, and reach off like tree branches. But um, the present version that you're working with right now. Um, the ultimate, it is going to be really nice. It's going to be where people say, war is stupid, let's stop it. Hating people is stupid, let's stop it. Um, hurting other people hurts us, let's stop it. Um, caring for other people, of course. Uh, it's going to be a reality, a world of human experience based on compassion, based on caring, based on healing, based on friendship, based on trust, um, you know, uh, trustworthiness, honesty, integrity, all of those things. Um, that's what we're working towards. And it seems we're going completely in the opposite direction but it's basically that we see these things first and then we can choose. As, as was said earlier in this conversation, because I was sort of overhearing something about discernment, you know, the difference between discernment and judgment. But it's, we're working on discernment. And the only way to discern sometimes is to experience the, the negative. Uh, and only then do you get, oh, that's what this is. Some people need to see both sides. And yes. some people need to see both sides really, really well. <laughs> uh, some people are so used to seeing the, the negative side of people that they don't know what to do with the positive side. It scares them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so true. We definitely do live in a time right now of uh, complete discernment. Absolutely. And I, it's kind of the future that you're describing there, or the potential future, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing Starbucks. <laughs> I'm seeing Mac I'm seeing all these things still. I'm I'm not seeing like, you know, everything's gonna go away. It's it's just it's the way we come about to 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 ourselves and others that that's gonna be the huge shift, isn't it? Slowly. Yeah, the huge shift is going how to how we relate to each other. One of the things that needs to happen is to drop let things drop. Corporations, let them drop. War, let it drop. Um, you know, the, the, um, the trollery, <laughs> you know, the trolls and the, the, the viciousness and the internet. It says we suddenly decide, you know, that's not who we are. We won't do that. It was not, you know, somebody commands us not to do it. It's just kind of like, it isn't any fun. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. So we are collectively developing to the point where we make different choices, choices, not because we're told, not because we're instructed, but because it feels right. How long could that take from a human understanding of like uh, evolution to get to that? About 100 years. Yeah. Well, look how much has happened in the past 100 years. <laughs> the tremendous amount of energy that's that's being poured into the world right now is is you know upholding this and raising this and raising this and raising this and it's kind of like it's not happening it's not happening oh it's been that way all along i hear you yeah i don't know if i you know i do i see the end of okay what you're saying there you know the corporations have got to go drop them and this has got to go drop them but you know if they're uh, coming from the right space and, and and they're able to and they're doing you know what's they're creating the right you know ecosystem within their own um organizations I, i'm sure they would survive do you know what i mean um absolutely yeah, yeah. I, th I think what you mean is the attachments to to them maybe as well yeah well the corporations that have uh, materialism as their bottom line at the cost of human humanity. There's going to be a choice that 
That's stupid. It's going to be a little more like, <laughs> why bother doing it that way? That's stupid. You know, so again, you know, this is a very interesting kind of, you know, where the humanity says, well, I'm done with that. That's that's kid stuff, right? <laughs> and that hundred years, I mean, that seems such a long time, don't it? But, you know, it's not, is it, when you see how quickly we've progressed? Um, yeah. Okay, uh, don't worry. You'll see changes as soon as five years. You'll see bigger changes in 10 and 15 years. Then there's going to be sort of a, a slowdown where nothing seems to be happening and it's all swirling around. And then 30 years from now, you're going to you're going to notice it again. And then 50 years from now, you're you're likely to be here still. But 50 years from now, it's going to be so obvious. There will still be pockets where people do it the old way. There will still be you know bastions of hatred. You know it's not going to go overnight. But it's, you're going to get more and more and more and more until finally hatred is the exception, not the rule. Fear is the exception, not the rule, etc. And the world will come back. The ecologies will be revivified. Well, do you, do you see earth changes taking place in that 50 year span as in, you know, Mother Nature? not war, but Mother Nature actually making the biggest difference. Yes, there will be some new land uh, formed and there will be some loss. Um, but a lot of the tumult will quiet within the next five years. I mean, the, the, the huge, uh, the global warming, hu human action has exacerbated it. It hasn't caused it. The earth is causing the warming. It's part of shifting the energy. It's part of responding to the, you know, the extra energy that's being poured into, uh, you know, the whole uh, solar system. I mean, it's warming up in Neptune. And you can't blame that on, on, on cars and trucks <laughs> or, or uh, you know, coal, coal, uh, <laughs> coal fires. But... Uh, the earth is taking in the new energy and has to bleed some of it off. That's actually where a lot of the heat is coming from. It's from the energy that's being poured in from the galaxy and from other layers of reality. Do you see that the phenomena of channeling? What do you see the of the channeling phenomena in the sense that uh, is that going to is that going to continue and grow? Do you think, or is it something that we're doing now and we won't need in the future? But what, what's your take on your perception of time and and that subject? Yeah, channeling will continue, but it'll be kind of like almost anyone can sing. Some people can sing on tune a little better than others, but Everyone can channel. You know, uh, some like to sing, some don't really feel like singing, but everyone can sing. They can't sing on tune sometimes, but everyone can channel. You know, it's, it's going to be such a normal everyday thing that it, it won't be special anymore. God, you know, you've got Edgar Casey here. What do you ask him? <laughs> this is terrible, isn't it? Um, no, there's so this. The, I, I want to make it count, and I know, and I appreciate you, you, you being here. Um, it, it, well, if you had a message for humanity, what would that be? When in doubt, do the loving thing. That is a quote from her mind. Message for humanity. You are so much more than who you imagine yourselves to be. That if only you stop still long enough to feel and to listen and to see and to know that larger self, it would be, there would be no argument. You could see another person's point of view and not have it 
disturb your point of view. You could see another person's needs and have it not uh, fulfilling those needs, not make you fear that you don't get your needs fulfilled. Um, we just, humanity needs to grow up a little bit more. And, you know, there are places where humanity is rather grown, you know, uh, more adult. Uh, yeah, there, there are several countries that, where humans are uh, catching on. Um, they don't want to let very many people know about it quite yet. But, uh, you know, New Zealand is one and, and um, Holland is another. Uh, there are uh, countries in, in South Africa that are uh, very adult and growing up and um, they, are, they are acting in grace. And that is the true message of everything is when you act in grace, you create grace and you live in grace. And everything you do is graceful and elegant and loving. God, you, you, you know, you did, you know, your work is still out there. Your work is still at the Casey Center in Virginia. People can still see all your, you know, thousands of readings. And, and I've been there, you know, I've been to the Casey Center. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And, it, and it continues. Um, I guess, um, is that something you're proud of? Is that something that, um, you know, you're, you're grateful that that's happened? Or I, did you think it was going to continue for this long or? There are times when I feel it is a bit like um, taking your third grade book on science and, you know, either, you know, putting it in a, in a, in a lucite box so, so nobody can touch it and not realizing that um, you've grown up, uh, science has changed. Uh, Channeling is still possible. Uh, you know, the, the tendency to find a good thing and hang on to it, it's not always so useful. Uh, there are those people now in this world who could do as well as I or better. They don't quite realize it or they don't quite know it, but there are those who can do as deep work as deep as I do. What was the difference between what you did back then to get that deep and what they're doing now, do you think? What's stopping them? I was speaking to a different world. And now they will be speaking to this world. I see. So the time when that information was brought out that at that time allowed you to go that deep? Mm, no, it, it, the body of work that was collected and left behind and is now in the box, you know, in the lucite box, you know, that was then, this is now, that was that world then. And I, and, and the wisdom of the, of the universe spoke to me, uh, through me, uh, for that time. But now is a new time. It is time for new information to get pulled in. I still feel, though, that some of the information that's there, well, a good part of it, oh, is yeah. still, people still go to the remedies today and they're still using them. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're still, they are, uh, with, with the results as well, as far as I know, with good results. Um, yes. But I think there's maybe a bit of a stigma attached to it because of, of the age of, of the information. But that yeah. would be about it, really. Um yeah, I hear what you're saying. Thank you for that answer. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, thank right. you. The, the mathematics in, a, you know, a third grade mathematics book is accurate. It's true. You know, mathematics doesn't change. It just broadens and deepens. So, of course, you could go back to, to, to the original stuff and get good out of it. But some of they don't. A lot of people don't realize that they're getting good out of it because they're also pulling in new information. And I guess uh, uh, we are here to manifest the life that we want as well. I think a, a lot of us forget that, don't we? That we can manifest the life that we want, but we, a lot of us feel that we are, um, are trapped in our own box in a sense, don't we? Yeah, you want it is to live who you are.
to discern, yeah, to discern your true nature. Um, not only in terms of your your divine roots and your divine self, but are you a person? Are you a natural healer? Are you a natural teacher? Are you a natural? You know, where are you naturally? Any one thing, you know, um, to live your soul's calling more than what you want. This is a there's a uh, a difference. Uh, now you when you have your soul's calling, it's beyond wanting. It's like this is what I will do. But wanting, you know, a Ferrari, that's one thing. <laughs> Realizing I'm a healer, this is what I do. Everything else is secondary. When people open up to who they are, what they are at, you know, in their true depths, a lot of materialism is just going to, you know, just who needs it? Who needs it? Who needs it? But but that 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 answer could also be a multi multi purpose as well. You know that that we what what we have are that true depth is um a, a number of things. Not to, you know we we want it. We want we know we we know we're this. We know we're that. And you know we do a number of things in our lifetime, or maybe during you know at the same time. You know mixing them together. Yeah, it could be a few things for some for some of us. Of course. Like, that's where it gets confusing, I think, sometimes. <laughs> it's not just that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, it's no more confusing than, than cooking. You know, <laughs> you have the flour over here and you have the eggs over here. What's yeah. the, you know, yeah. they're both different, but you combine them and, you know, don't worry about it. Because when, when you yeah. are in your heart self, your heart knows which happens next. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you sh you you sh you you know, in, in, when I was regressed, I, well, when I was in Holland, I was um, well, when I was in the Netherlands, let me say that I was regressed to a, uh, well, I don't even know if I, I was regressed. I was put on hypnosis, and the next next thing, I'm I'm in the you know in the not too distant future from now, really, uh, in, in the international spiritual news network, and you were there, and you were showing us around, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, you you helped me with my book that I've still not released yet, my channeled book. You you were there all throughout that. Uh but you were mm -hmm. there for this for this vision, this 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 concept of the International Spiritual News Network. Now whether that's gonna be a network that's gonna be a bit like a Gaia T V and then you know a Netflix mixed up with news as well, it might be. But um I'm i I'm kind of pulled to do it and I'm still thinking about it and I know I know that you'd helped us to see the potential. So mm -hmm. you know, but I'm not doing it yet, am I? <laughs> Not yet. To, yeah, to to a certain extent, um, don't worry about the mechanics of it's happening. Yes. Yes, you do have to pay attention to, to the mechanics when when you're when you're confronted with them. But it's like allow the network itself to instruct you. Right. Yes. You yeah. know this already. I do. I do. I do. It's just nice to hear it, though. That's you got to remind um, yourself. I know. Thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, look, um, I'm yeah. going to let you get, I'm going to end this session. And I just want to say, uh, I've really enjoyed yeah. speaking to you through Francis. So, you know, just thank you for coming through. Um, oh, one other thing as well. Contact. Sure. Contact with contact on a mass scale with maybe you know the idea that their space brothers are out there um oh, yes is it important that it happens that it's going to happen soon or is it something that's in a in a very far future do you think or do you feel the soon or the far future it depends upon human choices when we decide that peaceful is what we are, then the ETs will arrive. We have ETs on the planet now, but they are not very far above you in development. When you want to see the beings that are of greater development, you have to, you know, drop the war, drop the hatred, drop the, the, the envy and jealousy. And again, this will happen naturally. You may or may not have noticed how the children have been different in this time. 
and a great many of them are very advanced souls and they don't need a lot of what has been needed up until now. And when they grow into themselves and realize they can start creating the reality directly, things will change quite quickly. Understood. Well, thank you very, very much for that. Thank and you. I really enjoyed having your energy here and just, um, yeah, yep, very appreciative. I appreciate being asked because you and I have worked with much joy in the past and we will work with much joy in the future. And this has been a very enjoyable um, visit. Thank you. But I best leave. <laughs> so at least the channel can say right. goodbye in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Francis. Thank you what so, so much. I know. He's a very nice soul, isn't he? He's a very yeah. kind. You know, whenever I connected with him, I just felt a lot of kindness. Yeah. 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 yeah no, they just wanted to help. He's kind without being, quote, nice. You know, a lot of people are think that being nice is being kind. No, the true oh, kindness. That's right. He just wanted to is, help. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he wanted to be of service. Yeah, but being in service with wisdom. That's oh, yes, true yes, yes, he did have that, didn't he? Let's, let's be honest. Yes, yeah. yes, you can tell that, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, like, he takes up a fair amount of space, and yet, you know, it's not, um, he doesn't shove me out of the way. <laughs> it's sort of, you know, it's kind of like a large dog sitting on your lap, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, you love the dog, right? But the dog is large. <laughs> it takes up your lap. <laughs> no, I, I love that analogy as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm so glad I said yes to him. I did Because when, when, you know, this is all, you know, nothing's planned here, is it? And uh, yeah, I just, you know, thought, why not Casey? But um, I'm so glad I did. And I think what he had to say was, was really meaningful. Um, was, I'm very was, glad. Was, yeah, it was just right. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, very interesting. I, I remember some of it. I know you were talking a lot about Atlantis and uh, and and engineering and so on. But after a certain point, I said, "Okay, he could drive." Uh, don't ask a psychic what she said. <laughs> she usually, if she's really on and in, she won't remember because he's been driving the brain. That's you know? so funny. That's great. I love it. I love it, and I love your energy as well. I really do. And and I, you know, you know, you've you've got to be doing these these as readings one day. You know, offering this as a service because it's so easy for you. Do you know that? It's so easy. I know you do the Akashic record stuff, and that's so that's so that's so powerful because that's really getting to the root cause. But I mean, I wouldn't want this to become a, you know, like a, a, like a bit of a, you know, a circus where people, you know, just, you know, can connect with this, but they're not doing any work on themselves, where I guess the Akashic record is really going to do the work on themselves. But um, yes. I, I really like what you did there. And I, you know, I, I know other people would, but uh, I still understand why you do the Akashic and have that channeling aspect there as well. I, I do. I do get that. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah, there, there is a difference. There is, there is, but uh, still, you know, that was, you know, I, that was really good. Can I just say that? <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> that was impressive. Very impressive. And I've never seen your channel before. And I, that was, um, right. Yeah, I like that a lot. And as, I, and as I said at the beginning, you can tell the difference. It's the same face, but it's not the same person. <laughs> is there any final message that you might like to give the audience before we unfortunately have to say? Uh, thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Message to everyone, anyone. Um, I, I do remember him asking for that lovely phrase, when in doubt, do the loving thing. Um, that's about the best piece of message I could give. Uh, when in doubt, do the loving thing. And also learn the, discern the difference between discernment and judgment. You can see very clearly that this person is being foolish or stupid, or you can see very clearly that he has the saw on the wrong side of the branch. And if he keeps sawing, he's gonna fall down with the branch. That's discernment. To call him a stupid idiot, that's judgment. You know? 
<laughs> or to call them the all people with, with saws up in trees are idiots, that's judgment, you know, to, to work out the difference. I need um, to work on that. I'll, I'll just say yeah. that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, you know, you do need discernment. You do need to say, you know, that that doesn't add up or that seems real foolish to me and but i'll send you a poem which explains it okay that that was another gift from the universe that's the the third thing and the third and last thing is receive gifts from the universe they come in dreams they come in meditations they come all of a sudden you know you're talking to someone and you suddenly find something you know coming out of your mouth that you had no idea what it was and exactly what the person, you know, you know, be prepared for gifts from the universe. Get ready to receive them and, you know, enjoy them when they get there. You know, stories happen that way, as you know, as I was explaining about the Serevna and the mayors of the dawn. Be prepared to receive gifts. So my three messages. Francesca, just thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the honor and pleasure of doing this work with you. It, is a, it has been quite a fine time. <laughs>